Now I want to tell you about the radios. Here you've got one, one set, two sets, three sets here. I'll explain what these are. These knobs on the left are directly linked to functions within the simulator. Please do not alter any of these. They will do things to the aeroplane and they will not produce the result perhaps that you are expecting. So stay away from changing these. These should not be changed. Let's have a look at these. Looks like there are two frequencies on each one. Now, this is a communication device. This is a communication device. Both are for voice. We call this COM1 and this COM2. This is the navigation. This sets on navigation beacons. So that sets this, and this is navigation 1, and this is set to navigation 2. So you have two navigation points, so if you need it to, you can form an intersection between the two radials coming off of beacons. We'll talk about that at another time. This one is called the ADF, the Automatic Direction Finder. And it controls this little window down here. Now the automatic uh, direction finder is always going towards something that is transmitting constantly. And if we look at the if we look at this chart here, at the top left it says ATIS is on frequency 119.32. ATIS is the automated terminal information service. Let's listen to that and see what it tells us, okay? So that's 11932. Here's 11932. If we wanted to, we could change, alter the, the frequency this way. But once it's in here, this is the standby. We push that, and then it becomes Exeter, airport information, Juliet, one, two, one, three, Zulu, wind, calm, visibility, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, few clouds at 5,700, temperature, one, five, two point five, altimeter, one, zero, one, three, landing and departing, runway, eight, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft, red back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Juliet. Well, that told us some very important information, it told us about cloud level, told us what the active runway is, it told us the temperature, it told us the Q&H, that's the barometric pressure, and it gave us any indication about whether the airport is closed for traffic because of visibility or still open. This happens to be open. The second one, this can be the one for the tower. So, this is tuned to, we need to go to 119.8. So, 119, the outer one changes the big numbers, and then the smaller one changes the smaller ones. So, 11908. Now, we're tuned to the tower. I don't know if there's anything on at the moment. No, nope. nobody's asking for traffic, so we're not able to now to listen to both of these frequencies, you have to push the both switch up. But there's nothing on it, so not to worry. Now, on the navigation, 
if we're going to be coming in to land on runway 8, it says that there is a beacon here, and it's 109.9. .9. So let's tune in to 109.9. .9. Push the active standby. Now it goes over to there. I don't know if you noticed, but immediately this had a needle that responded. See, the needle moved all the way over, saying that we are to one side of that beacon being transmitted. Let's find out if we are actually picking up the Exeter signal. If you notice right here, it says on this, there's IXR. And if you notice underneath, it's got two dots, a dash, dot, dot, dash, and a dot dash dot. So I'm going to switch on nav one sound. Hear that? And that's the way you find out if you connect it to the proper frequency. Now there is also a beacon, it says here, and this is on frequency 337. So if we change this one to 337, There we go, 337.0, and that's the ADF. Over here is the sound for the ADF. Let's listen in. That matches right here. EX. That's the beacon. This at the bottom is something that you won't change unless you are told to by the air traffic controller. 1200 is the transponder code for an aircraft flying under VFR rules, that's visual flight rules. If you were instrument flight rules, then you would be given a, fre a frequency to put in here, transponder code, that would then identify you on the air traffic radar screens. But you don't need to change that because this is the standard for VFR traffic, which is you. Okay. Right now, let's recap. You set the frequency by using this knob and set it here. Push that and it makes it the active frequency over here. You have COM1 and COM2. 1 and 2. At the moment, this is set to only transmit on COM1. If you want to listen to both frequencies at the same time, to listen, not to talk, but to listen, then you click up the both and then, Airport information. And then both frequencies can be heard. These are navigation frequencies and they change these dials as you can see the lines are now moving because both of them are the same but this one controls this dial that one controls that dial this 
is the ADF, Automatic Direction Finder, and that controls this dial right here. Fly the needle as it is. As a little aside, World War II, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, they did so by taking off from aircraft carriers in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and then went in the general direction of Hawaii. When they got within reasonable range, they tuned this frequency into Radio Honolulu. Once they heard the broadcast from Radio Honolulu, like the BBC but in Honolulu, this needle then told them where that signal was coming from. So they simply just turned the airplane and made sure that they flew the needle. That's called flying the needle. And that is what the Japanese did to get to Pearl Harbor to do their bombing. Just a little aside. And again, we can hear this frequency because here's the ADF. Push that up and let's see whether it comes out with this information on here. There we are. EX. Very good. Well, that concludes episode 5 dealing with the radio panel and the communications. I hope you've learned something from this. Next comes the final, number 6, in this series and that will be taking a test flight and we'll have a little run around Exeter Airport. Take off and landing. How's that? See you the next time.